Hello everyone. Today we are going to study about lyophilization technology. So let us start with the lecture. So what is lyophilization technology by definition? Lyophilization means a stabilizing process in which a substance is first frozen and then quantity of the solvent is reduced. First by sublimation means there are two process of drying for lyophilization. First is by sublimation and then the desorption that will no longer support biological activity or chemical reaction. Now why there is a need of lyophilization technique? So for pharmaceutical use generally the sterile powder we can prepare by using lyophilization technique. We have to prepare the dry powder by lyophilization technique and after that we can sterilize it by applying the dry heat sterilization or we can say by radiation. Now what are the other needs of lyophilization process? So we can preserve the biological activity of a product. We can reduce the product weight so we can lower the weight so it will decrease the transportation cost we can dry the thermolabile materials so this technique is generally used to dry the thermolabile materials now we will see the principle of lyophilization technique so generally the lyophilization, the other name of lyophilization is a freeze drying and it is carried out using a simple principle that is sublimation. Sublimation means a transition of a substance from the solid to directly the vapor. There will be no intermediate state of the liquid phase. So this is a sublimation. So freeze drying or we can say lyophilization is carried out using this sublimation. Lyophilization perform at temperature and pressure conditions below the triple point. To enable sublimation of ice, we can say this process is carried out below the triple point of water we can say. Now what is the triple point of water? So it will be lower than 0 0.0098 degree centigrade temperature and the pressure should be lower than 4.58 mmHg. Now the process is performed at low temperature and low pressure. Here low temperature and low pressure should maintain and at all time we have to apply the vacuum. Now we will see why we have to apply the vacuum, why we have to apply the heat that we will see. So now these are the components of freeze dryer or we can say lyophilizer. Generally it have the chamber then here it have the vacuum pump, the cooling system, the ice condenser, there will be a drying chamber and here we are getting the product. So, so generally this process is carried out in aseptic area. This is the non-aseptic area. We can see over here this is the chamber. There are the electric coils. This is the condenser and here the refrigerant and this is the vacuum pump. Now we will see the steps involved in lyophilization process. So lyophilization process is performed by using four steps. First is freezing stage means there will be a freezing. Then primary drying stage, sublimation stage. Then secondary drying stage. Then packing stage. Now this is the lyophilization process. So what are the steps are there that generally include in a lyophilization process? So there are generally four steps for lyophilization process. So first is the freezing. Freezing means here what we have to do first. First the product is frozen. After that the freezing the product is placed under vacuum. 
and this enables the frozen solvent in the product to vaporize without passing through the liquid phase means this process is known as sublimation so why we have to apply the vacuum to carry out sublimation then heat by applying heat we can increase the rate of sublimation and after that condensation means low temperature condenser plates remove the vaporized solvent from the vacuum chamber by converting it back to the solid so here we have to employ the condensation now we will see all these steps in detail so first is the freeze drying stage freezing the product solution to a temperature below its eutectic temperature the low temperature and pressure should be maintained and formation of ice crystals occurs so there will be a formation of ice and the rate of ice crystallization define the freezing process and efficiency of primary drying means how much ice crystallization is there it will define the efficiency of primary drying now primary drying now what is primary drying so here we have to apply the heat we have to perform we have to do the sublimation so heat is introduced from shelf to the product under graded control by electrical resistance coils here we have to apply the heat to increase the rate of sublimation so here also the temperature and pressure should below the triple point of water as i discussed previously and the driving force is the vapor pressure here the driving force is the vapor pressure difference between the evaporating surface and the condenser how would we know that primary process or we can say primary drying is completed so there will be a thermocouples from that we can identify our primary drying process is completed or not so several analytical methods are available for determining the primary drying process is complete so when we can say that our process is complete so first what happen when sublimation of ice crystal is complete the product temperature whatever product we are getting so the temperature of product will increase the approach the shelf temperature but when the product temperature equals to the shelf temperature we can say that our primary drying is complete after that we can go for secondary drying so now what is secondary drying in secondary drying we have to apply the heat so here the temperature is raised to 50 to 60 degree centigrade and vacuum is lowered about 50 mmhg means here what we have to do we have to increase the temperature and we have to decrease the pressure and bound water is removed but the rate of drying is low and it will take a higher time we can say it is a very long process it will take 10 to 20 hours for completion after that the next step is the packing so after drying the vacuum is replaced by filter dry air or we can say nitrogen to establish the atmospheric pressure and whatever product we are getting that we have to fill in either ampules or vials or we can say the bottles so you can see this is the liquid and this is the converted or lyophilized product that is in a powder form or we can say the solid form so ampules are sealed by either tip sealing or we can say pool sealing method and vials and bottles are sealed with a rubber closure and aluminum caps so this is the bottle having a lyophilized product now this is a diagram of a lyophilization process having a graph of the shelf temperature in degree centigrade versus our time in hours so this is the first step freezing 
Here we are applying the vacuum. It's a primary drying. We can say sublimation. Then secondary drying means desorption. And here this is the percentage of water we are getting after the process. So the process is clear by this diagram. Now the advantages of freeze drying over conventional drying. So these are the parameters for product quality. This is a freeze drying and conventional drying. So form of wet material to be dried. So in conventional drying what happened? We have to use the pieces. But here we can use the liquid pieces. We can say powder or hold the product. Then dry shape and form is maintained in a freeze drying. But and appearance is also nearly same in a freeze drying. But here it will not get maintained. Color will be maintained in a freeze drying. Here it will be faded. The rehydration will be fast over here. But here it will be slow. Then heat exposure is more in a conventional drying than freeze drying. The oxygen exposure is very low over here. But here it will be, be a very high. So here there will be a chance of a chemical reaction so it will be degraded but here there is no chance now retain volatiles it will be excellent and here it will be poor so by considering this kind of parameter this freeze drying process is more advantageous than conventional drying process now we will see what are the advantages of freeze drying or we can say the lyophilization so the removal of water at low temperature. Then thermolabile materials can be dried. It's so more advantageous. The compatible with the aseptic operation. The more precise field weight control. And sterility can be maintained over here. Reconstitution is also easy. So this lyophilization process is a most advantageous process than conventional technique. Some disadvantages are also there. Many biological molecules are damaged by in two process in freezing or we can say the freeze drying or both. The product is prone to oxidation due to high porosity and large surface area. Therefore, the product should be packed in a vacuum or using inert gas. As we have seen in the components of a freeze dryer, there will be a inert gas. So, in a container, impervious to gases. Cost may be an issue. It will be depend on the product and long time process. This is the more disadvantageous. It will contain more time. Now we will see the applications. So first is the pharmaceutical application and biotechnology. So we can say that to increase the shelf life of the product we have to apply this technique in vaccines as well as we can say that in some injectable preparation for pharmaceuticals. Now for food industry. So we can see that the freeze dry fruits can be produced by this technique. Then instant coffee powder is prepared by this technique. Then others, for example, we can synthesize the chemicals by this technique. And here this is the image. It will show that the water damaged books or documents we can say we can recover the water damaged book as well as the documents. So these are the applications of lyophilization process. Now these are some example of marketed formulations like some antibiotics like amphotericin B then some drugs like clothazide sodium cisplastine some anti-neoplastic agents then anesthetic agents in IV infusion we can give this product as a lyophilized product. So in the next lecture we will see the containers and closers for parental preparation. So must watch the next video. Thank you dear learners to watch the video.